My dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, today I'm going to speak to you on the topic of sin. So you have your Bible, you have your notebook. It'll be good that we register it, we write it down. For when we hear the word of God, we like it. But when we write it down, we will remember it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I would like from you all is when I say hallelujah, it will be nice if you can reciprocate by a louder hallelujah. So we are not having a match or something like that. When I say a hallelujah, I have the benefit of the mic. You reciprocate, you respond with a louder hallelujah. Is it possible? Yeah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. So, we now begin with the topic of sin. Open our ears because we are asking the Lord to give us a life changing revelation. I know most of you like knowledge, but knowledge may not even change you. You can have a bag full of knowledge. It may not change you. But revelation is life-changing. So, when we talk about sin, we know that, you know, you can go to various definitions of sin. But I'll be touching only one this morning. Sin started with whom? If I ask you this question, if I put forward, whom did sin start with? It started with the angels. It started with the angels, the archangel, Lucifer. And so, we can say that sin is rebellion. Rebellion against God. You are doing something which is against God. That is rebellion. Then we come to human beings. What happened there in the garden? They were told to do something and they precisely did the thing that they were told not to do. Am I right? They were told to do something and they precisely did the very thing that they were told not to do. So what is sin? Sin is disobedience. Like this, we can have a number, a number of definitions. We already learned two. Sin is rebellion. Sin is disobedience. The Bible says sin is lawlessness. We are going to touch a different angle. We are going to touch a different angle. Precious souls who are seated here, maybe you are fighting or you are in the grip of one sin or more. Maybe you are struggling with the sin of pornography. Maybe you are struggling with the sin of hatred. Maybe you are struggling with the sin of coveting people. Maybe you are struggling with the sin of gluttony, too greedy. But you know, my dear precious souls, when we go to solve one sin, the another rises up. What is the reason? You and I, we need to go to the root of the sin. So today, as I am talking to you on sin, as God wants you to hear on this topic of sin, because if we are dealing with sin, I believe most of our problems will be solved. And this entire day, we're going to hear not only on sin, how to overcome sin. And I'm very sure if I ask you, are you interested in this topic, you would say, yes, please speak. So sin, the root of all sins. 
What is the root of all sins? So very interesting is, we look at this word S-I-N. We look at this word S-I-N. And right in the center, right in the center, you have one letter. What is that letter? What is that letter? I. So probably we are going to look at sin in a different angle altogether. This is not taken from theology, but it is from inspiration, sharing it with you. So I told you, look at that word, S-I-N. And right in the center of that word, sin, is I. So what is the root of every sin? You can name it pride, ego, lust, bitterness, lying, greed, laziness. You can name it all. The root behind every sin is the big letter I. So today, probably we are going to hear a new angle about sin. I is the reason for sin. I is the root of sin in my life. I is the root of sin in your life. Can I repeat it? It's very important because if you understand it, a lot of your problems are going to be solved. You're even going to experience victory over sin. I. Can I repeat it? What is that? I. S-I-N. And I is the root of all sin. If you study whatever be your sin, if you study about your sin, I is the root of all sin. I stands for selfishness. Why am I proud? Selfish. I. Why am I lusting about someone else? I. I want that pleasure. We are getting it? Why am I not happy with one sandwich and I want another sandwich? Greedy. I want more. As there is a statement, ye dil mange, more. Greed, I. Lust, I. Pride and ego, I. So if you see what is the root of our sin, the root of our sin is only I. And once you are able to identify the root of your sin and my sin, we will be able to walk victoriously. Hallelujah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. Today we find ourselves in a state where we are living in a lot of defeats. Today we find ourselves in a state where we are defeated by sin. We pray, we sing, but we are defeated by sin. Why is it that I or you, we are not able to overcome sin? Because we have not understood that the root of sin is I. A hallelujah, a hallelujah, a hallelujah. So, you have your Bible and we are going to Luke chapter 15. We are going to learn something very, very wonderful from Luke chapter 15. It's very famous. All of you have read it, heard about it. The prodigal son. Have you heard about it? There's a title. There's a title of this parable. The prodigal son. Yes. You open your Bible, but, you know, we'll make it short and sweet. Something for you to understand. Please listen carefully. Two people are asking the father two different questions. Are we all paying attention? 
Yes. Two brothers are asking the father two questions. I want all of you to hear. The younger son goes to the father and what does he ask the father? He asks the father, give me half of my share of the property. Yes or no? So please, if you have your pencil or your pen, your Bible, you underline it, give me. You have to search. Every time we are not going to give you easy quotation, you have to search. It says, give me. The younger son goes to the father and what does he ask the father? Give me my share of the property. Now, all of you all know what happens there? What happens afterwards? Does he get his share of the property? He gets a share of the property. And what does he do? He goes to a faraway country. Remember, when we sin, we go far away. From whom? You all are there with me? So remember this, there is so much to learn from what we read. The Bible says, he goes to a faraway country. So sin is nothing but going far away from God. And what does he do? We all know what he does with that money. The Bible says, he misuses the money on gambling, liquor, and spending it on prostitutes. That's what the Bible says. But finally, the car goes out of the fuel. Understood? The money comes to a point of zero. And very interesting it says is that when he was having money, he had a lot of friends around him. When he had spent everything, all his friends began to say, goodbye. And where does this young man land? He lands in the pigsty. And none of us would like to ever land in a pigsty, right? Uh, this is the description of an unwanted place. And it is in the unwanted place that we come to our senses. Are you all there with me? The younger brother came to his senses when he was in a pigsty. Prophet Joel came to his senses when he was in the belly of the fish. That's what I told you, unwanted places. Peter came to his senses when he was in the garden, spying upon what was happening. And the servant girl told that I have seen you along with Jesus. He was hiding in the garden. So what I want to say is, in your life, you all are young, probably you are in an unwanted place in your life. Is the Holy Spirit speaking to us? Probably you are in an unwanted place, in an unwanted case, in an unwanted relationship, in a relationship which is already broken probably with your parents or with your own brothers and sisters. You were doing so well in your studies, but today you're finding it difficult just to go to the next class unwanted place somewhere you are realizing I am in this unwanted place because of my own mistakes the younger son realizes it and we all know after that what happens when he realizes it he begins to think the servants and the slaves in my father's house get better food and better treatment. I am here in the pigsty. 
And he runs to his father, and the Bible says the father does not wait for him to come to him. The father runs, goes to his son, and hugs him. Remember, this is the same son who raised a cry and who said, give me half of my share. And now the father, knowing that the son has misused the money and done all the wrong things, is ready to accept the son. He goes and hugs him. And what a party does he throw? What a party does he throw? He was lost and he's come back. On hearing the commotion, the elder brother asked the servants, what's going on? And he gets the answer. Your younger brother is back. Your father is delighted and he's thrown a party for everyone. And the elder brother goes to the father and this is the question that he asks him. I know you're already reading in your Bible. What is the question that he asks him? You did not give me. What was the question that he asked? You did not give me. Now two sons are asking questions to their father. The younger one asked the question, give me. And the elder one Ask the question, you did not give me. Is there any difference? Both of them look at their mindsets, I. Both of them look at their mindset, I. Self. The self is the reason, the root for our sin. Once we understand it, I'm telling you, you will be champions, ready to overcome any sin. You will fight without giving in. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. Is that good news? That means you can overcome the desire for lust and pornography. That means you can overcome the desire for greed for food. You can overcome all the hatred and the anger. Because the Bible says you can overcome. You can overcome. You know... These last two years, there was something very special that was happening. Corona time. And so many self-made preachers rose up. You all understanding what I want to say? So many YouTube channels came up. Self-made preachers. And many of them were telling, Corona, Jesus Christ is going to come now. And people were scared. You know what they were doing? They were using your fear. And many of them were giving hefty donations to such ministries which rose up. I know many of you have actually done it. What is the sad thing, do you know? You do not know the Bible. Because in the Bible it is written, Jesus Christ will not come during the time of a sickness or war or flood, or famine. These things have to take place before. And please mind it, Jesus Christ is going to come back again. Not as a carpenter's son. He's going to come back as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Mind it. And now when he comes, as the Bible says, he'll come like a thief in the night. He'll come as in the days of Noah. What was happening in the days of Noah? Noah and his family were prepared. Others were not prepared. He will come in the times of prosperity. Why? During the times of prosperity, people hardly have time for God. Do you know during the time of coronavirus, entire families were glued before the TV? Huh? Families which would never pray, entire families would be seated before the TV. Is it happening now? That is the question. Is it happening even now? Is the entire family seated before the TV, adoring the Lord, praising the Lord, watching the online mass? I doubt. I doubt. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, 
why did i raise up this topic last days and the question is are we in the last days how do you and i know that we are in the last days the bible says so the bible says there will be some signs to know very clearly that we are in the last days you have your bible you please open to 2 timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 2 timothy chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5 it's very nice to see you all open the bible take down the notes i told you if you hear it orally you will like it but you will forget it chances but when you write it down you will not only like it you will remember it when you can open it some other time okay 2 timothy that is in the new testament st paul's second letter to timothy chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5 and it clearly says in the last days the first sign what is the first sign in the last days people will be lovers of self verses 2 verses 2 it says people will be lovers of themselves i me myself i me myself and the question is what about me what will i get what about me what will i get hallelujah so that is the first sign of the last days in the last days people will be lovers of self and i'm very sure we are already in the last days you know you can open your bible and you can see all the signs people will be lovers of money okay about the youth it is written it is written something a sign which has never happened before children will be disobedient to their parents it is given here in the bible don't look at me like that children will be disobedient to their parents so my question is are all children going to be disobedient to their parents the answer is no if the parents have raised up the children in the fear of god and love of god they can be rest assured that their children will never be disobedient to them but if parents are busy giving their children only food clothing shelter education not just ssc or cbsc you know it it rises up icsc even something better and only education will not help you to say no to sin are we hearing only education will not help you to say no to sin uh, you all are looking at me in a very different way isn't it i'll repeat that only education will not help you to say no to sin now why am i telling it why am i telling it because i have been a teacher myself for 25 years not now i have been teaching college students commerce i have been a teacher myself and i know that only education will not make you good people i'm telling you from experience only education will not make you god fearing only education will not make you to say no to sin i know the atmosphere you are living in today is much dangerous than what it was 25 years before much dangerous i agree with you but to say no to sin is possible you have come here attending a retreat we are not only here to tell you this is your mistake or that is your mistake we are also here to tell you you are wonderful children of god you can say no to sin 
Hallelujah. So I'm asking you this question. Can you say no to sin? Is it possible to say no to sin? How many of you say it's possible to say no to sin? It's possible? You believe it is possible to say no to sin? Okay. Would you like to hear a testimony? Would you like to hear a testimony? Okay. Now, this is about a college girl. She was around 17. 20 years back, I'm talking about 20 years back. 17. And she met me when I was in Mumbai. She met me and she told me, Uncle, I want to tell you something. So I told you, please share. Uncle, my friends, all of us decided to bunk the lecture. Very common, right? To bunk the lecture. I said no, but they all forced me. And we were around 10 or 15 of us. We bunked the lecture. And we went to one of our friend's house. Apartments. And there we had some snacks. We were having a jolly good time. And then my friend, his parents were not there. He put on the TV and he put on the video cassette. Those days, I'm talking about 20 years back, they never had the fast internet as we have. I do not know whether it's a blessing or a curse. It's a blessing if we control it. It's a curse if the internet controls us. Am I right? I repeat, it's a blessing if we control it, but it's a curse if it controls us. So those days there was no internet and this girl told me, uncle, he put on the TV. And then started playing naked men and women. And this girl raised her, you and cry. I don't want to be here. I did not bunk the class to be here. She just got up and left the room. I looked at her and I was put to shame. Why was I put to shame? Because the first time when somebody introduced me to pornography those days, I never said no like her. I saw it, I saw it, and for many years, I kept on seeing it until it became an addiction. And I attended a retreat just like you are at the age of 29. The Lord set me free. But like that girl, I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no. How could this girl say no? I began wondering, how could this girl say no? Because peer pressure is something. You agree with me? Peer pressure, pressure from your friends is something. You know, otherwise they'll start teasing you. You don't have a boyfriend. You come from a village. You're not going to watch this. Which time are you living in? This girl, I'm very sure she was ridiculed by all her friends. But she did not give in. She did not give in. I began to ask myself. I said yes readily. Born in a Christian family. I was educated in a Christian school and that too with the Redemptorist Priest School. Christian name. Baptism certificate. I am a Christian, so-called Christian. And I gave in easily when my friends told me to watch it. But this girl, other girls and boys, they saw it, but this girl said no. And I began to ask myself this question. How could she say no? How could she say no? Sirach 15, 15. Very easy to remember. Just write the quotation. 
Sirach chapter 15 and verses 15. And what does it say? Listen, what does it say? It says, if you choose, you can keep the commandments. Did you all hear this? It's so apt. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. There's a second part to it. To be faithful is a matter of your choice. The second part says, to be faithful is a matter of your choice. So God has given you and me a free will. What did I do? What did that girl do? When I was told by my friends to watch the so-called prone movies, I used my free will. I wanted to satisfy myself and I said yes. Because God has not made me as a machine or a robo. None of us here. We have a free choice. Yes? We have a free choice. A free will. God has given you and me a free will. I use the free will to say yes to sin. The girl used a free will to say you are there with me? The girl used a free will to say no to sin. The same situation. I am not talking about any one of you. Am I putting myself to shame? No. I'm telling the truth, but I'm also telling that if you are caught up in this situation, just as the Lord delivered me 25 years back, he will also do it to you. I want you all to hear more about this. I used my free will to do what I wanted. Didn't I know the Ten Commandments by that time? It was 13 or 15 years when I started. Didn't I know the Ten Commandments? I knew the Ten Commandments. But what did I read the Word of God? To obey the commandments. What did I say? To obey the commandments is a matter of your choice. And to be faithful is again a matter of your choice. If you wish, you can keep the commandments. The girl kept the commandment, I failed. And when she said all that, when I was still preaching, my head was put down to shame. You know why? Because as I told you, Christian family, Christian name, Christian school, it doesn't make a person Christian at all. And that girl, I will, I, will, I will keep her name secret, okay? That girl, 20 years back, Hindu girl. Y'all are surprised? It will put us Christian youth to shame. Hindu girl. Only she was hearing about Jesus. Faith and love for Jesus began to grow. And that is exactly the reason for this retreat. You should fall in love with Jesus. Right now, many of us are in love with our own selves. And as I told you, I is the reason for sin. Many of us are in deep love with our own selves. This girl said no to sin. She used a free will to say no to sin. Not baptized, having no Christian name, not coming from a Christian school, not coming from a Christian family. Yet, when I researched, when I studied about her, how could she say no? The only thing is, she, please listen to this, probably there is an answer to your own struggle of sin. She wanted to please Jesus more than herself. Can I repeat it? I got the answer. How could that girl say no? She's got no Christian background. Probably only for one year she's hearing Christian preachings. How could this girl say no? Then, when I looked into it, the answer was very obvious. 
whatever she wanted to do from that time she wanted to please jesus more than herself and what did i do when i was a youth i wanted to please myself and when you and i please ourselves jesus is nowhere in the picture hallelujah you are stunned i can see your faces you are you are all paying attention i can see your faces are you all stunned by the testimony yes because i was stunned how can a hindu girl when she is tempted say no and then i realized this girl said no because she wanted to please jesus and whenever we sin we please ourselves and jesus is out of the picture hallelujah hallelujah can we say a louder hallelujah louder you can you can say louder than that yes once more raising both our hands louder a hallelujah a hallelujah a hallelujah can you pray with me can you pray with me left hand on your chest and right hand raised towards heaven left hand on your chest and right hand raised towards heaven a hallelujah a hallelujah a hallelujah lord jesus lord jesus help me to live a life that is pleasing to you lord jesus help me to live a life that is pleasing to you a hallelujah a hallelujah a hallelujah yes my dear brothers and sisters small prayers are good right right you will get the answer to your problem of sin is there anyone seated here who's not struggling with sin all of us are and that is the reason you are attending the retreat and get this answer very clear let this be your prayer even when you're tempted even when you're tempted lord jesus help me to live a life that is pleasing to you every choice that i make let me ask myself am i pleasing jesus or am i pleasing myself am i pleasing jesus or am i pleasing myself you need to ask this question and i'm telling you you will be much better off did jesus please anyone when he lived here on this earth did jesus please anyone when he lived here on this earth yeah did jesus please anyone when he lived here on this earth he pleased his father can you see the connection whom did he please now please try to understand you may find it is complicated it is simple try to understand it listen when jesus christ left heaven and came down to earth did he come down as god what is the answer did he come down as god or did he take the form of a simple man just like you and me what is the answer he took the form of a human being philippians chapter 2 okay that is the answer you read it when you have time philippians chapter 2 says jesus emptied himself and took the form of a human being he had to empty himself of his god being god and he took the form of a human being that is why jesus could feel the temptations many of us know in the garden jesus christ was tempted soon after his time of fast do we know jesus was tempted we all know jesus was tempted did he give in to the temptation and the secret was this he could have said yes to the temptation but jesus as a human being just like you and me was living to please his 
to please whom to please his father okay now we all know jesus had to be baptized because he became a human being he had to be baptized uh, you all know the scene of the baptism of jesus mark chapter 1 and verses 11 Uh, you need not open your bible please pay attention mark chapter 1 verses 11 the heavens opened the scene is baptism of jesus the heavens opened and a voice came from heaven and what did the voice say this is my beloved son do you know what is written after that in whom i am well pleased now what was the age when jesus was baptized 30 years right that means right from his birth to the age of 30 every year every day he lived a life to please his father that is why no sin was found in jesus you all are there with me it is possible you know that's why when i look at that girl and you know the best thing is best thing is i met her a few years back of course now 20 years back she was just a 17 year old girl and probably around uh, 16 years back so she was around 33 but now she came to meet me for one of the night vigil services there and she introduced me to her husband and she introduced me to two of her children and very proudly she said brother i am baptized and this is my husband he was also a hindu he is also baptized our children are also baptized hallelujah a hallelujah so please take it from me you are born in a christian family you have a christian name studied in a christian school moving around with christian's friends no guarantee that you will live a life pleasing to god you have to keep it in your mind i am going to live only to please god otherwise just like that prodigal son i will find myself in a pig sty in an unwanted situation just like prophet joel i will find myself in the belly of a fish just like saint peter i will find myself in the corner of a garden i will find myself in unwanted places brothers and sisters if you are finding in your life that you are living in depression right now that you are finding that you are not studying as well as you used to study before if you are finding yourself in an unhappy relationship or a situation that you don't want to be the reason is just like the prodigal son give me he live to please himself and he is paying the price remember remember for all of us the rule is the same whatever we sow whatever we sow we will also reap it's a rule it's a rule common for you and for me whatever we sow we will also reap and my dear brothers and sisters sin has destroyed individual lives sin has destroyed individual lives sin has destroyed families sin has destroyed relationships sin has even destroyed nations you know i'm very surprised today the nation that 300 years back was very proud of belonging to jesus you know which nation i'm talking about 300 years back even on the dollar you can find this in god we trust today their trust is no longer in god many of the public places they even cannot take the bible i'm talking about not a muslim country i'm talking about america it's sad in the name of democracy and freedom 
Christianity, the pillar on which this nation was built up, today it's no longer having that Christian freedom, just a few people, few percentage. Name the sins and it is all found there. That is why when parents say, my children are going to USA, children are going to Canada, I just say, I hope you have put the fear of God in your children that they will learn to love Jesus. If your children learn to love Jesus, let them go to any nation, they will be able to say no to sin. But if your children do not know who Jesus is, they are in for trouble. And by the way, you don't have to go to America to be in trouble. Our own India is not lagging far behind. Am I right or wrong? Our own India is not lagging far behind. Greed for money is one of the signs of sin. Today you ask, you know, I'm telling it from the counseling session experience. Just two weeks back, I had a wonderful youth who came to me for counseling. And one of the questions he says is, asked me is, brother, what about money? Today, most of the people want to make money. Can you help me? Can you tell me about money? Because I too want to make money. I told him, making money is not a problem. Making money is not a problem, but how you make your money is the big question. How you make the money? Are you making money at the cost of your health, of your family, of your relationship? That is problem. Is money become your God? Is money controlling you? That is the problem. Remember, the first place in our life should only be to Jesus. And if you and I take a decision, I will live a life to please Jesus, nothing like it. And what did the father say? This is my beloved son. And today, I only pray and hope that our heavenly father looks at you all and say, these are my beloved sons. These are my beloved daughters with whom I am well pleased. You put before yourself this question. Whenever you are in a tough situation, you know, just wanting to share something with you. Whenever you are in a tough situation, you put this question before you. Take time, never jump into a decision. Suppose a young man proposes to you, take your time. A young girl proposes to you, take your time. And whatever decision you take, do not allow anyone to force you. I've seen some brave people. I know about, since I should teach, I know about an incident which took place around 25 years back. A very famous incident from where I used, I've come. A boy was pestering this beautiful girl, proposing her, proposing her time and again, time and again, and this girl said, no. This girl said, no. And finally this boy told her, if you don't say yes, I am going to go to your building. She asked, why my building? I'm going to go to the terrace of your building and from there I'm going to jump down. Now, this is pure pressure, isn't it? Pure pressure. And I'm telling you, never fall for all such pleasures. And what do you think would have happened? I'm not making up a story, this happened. This boy went mad in love, no? It is not love, it is infatuation. I'll tell you what is real love. I'll come to it, we have some time. I'll tell you what is real love. This is not love and don't fall for it. This boy went to the terrace of this building, 27th floor building, and he jumped from there. Would anything be left there? Nothing. You think this girl should have any guilt feeling that she said no? And I feel she should not have any guilt feeling. Brothers and sisters, my dear, 
precious souls. I call you all precious souls because remember one thing, the soul lost, everything lost. The soul lost, everything lost. You have nothing else. And this is the word that changed a young youth, a young man by the name of Francis Xavier. And what was that word which changed his life? What will man gain if he wins the whole world and loses his soul? And what can he offer in exchange for his soul? Nothing. That is why I've been calling at least three or four times, I've been telling precious souls, your souls are precious. So whenever you are in a difficult situation, ask this question, WWJD. Have you heard about it? I'll tell you, if you have time, you read that book, you know. I'll tell you which book it is. WWJD. What would Jesus do? It is not from me. I've not copied it from anyone. I'll tell you where it is taken. You can download it in the Google Books free. Okay? The name of the book is In His Steps. The name of, his of this book is In His Steps. And the author, of this book is one Mr. Monroe, that is his center, middle name, Monroe. Okay? And this book was written in 18, it, it was published in 1896, so you can see how old it is. It started a revolution there in America. In his steps is the name of the book, that means in the steps of Jesus. And it started a revolution there. Whenever people had to live the life for Jesus, they would ask this question, important decisions, what would Jesus do in the same situation? You all are there with me? What would Jesus do in the same situation? So the name of the author is Charles Monroe Sheldon. Charles Monroe Sheldon. And when I read this book, wonderful, mind-blowing, you know the number of copies that has been sold? 500 lakhs. So you should be the next one. Get your hands. You can download it free. Google Books, you can download it free. Read it. Your life will be changed, revolutionized. You can have a radical change in your life. Hallelujah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, again I ask you this question. Precious souls. If that girl who was an Hindu only learned about Jesus, heard about Jesus, if she could say no to sin, can you and I say no to sin? Yes or no? Yes. It is yes, a big yes. And the only reason why she could say no is she was not living to please herself. She was living to please Jesus. She loved Jesus. Love and sin are the opposites of each other. She loved Jesus. I'll take just two more minutes. Three more minutes. I have three more minutes, then we'll pray. I hope the Lord has spoken to you. Huh? I did not give you a mention of various sins. I told little by little, but I told you the root of sin is I, me, myself. From today, ask Jesus. Ask yourself rather about Jesus. Should I live a life to please myself or Jesus? This girl, you know, she's a central figure no, of this talk. This girl loved Jesus. And I'm asking you, you already fallen into many sins. Don't write yourself off. Don't write yourself off. There will be a new beginning, a new beginning in your day. As it happened with me 25 years back, there will be a new beginning. You believe it? Do you want to love Jesus? Do you want to love Jesus? Do you want to love Jesus? Listen. Jesus asked the same question to Peter three times. And what did Peter say? What did Peter say? Yes, all the three times? Listen to it very carefully. 
Jesus asked, do you love me? Agape love. Greek. Love me means sacrificial love. Hello, there with me? And Peter answered all the three times. Yes, master, I love you. And you know that I love you. His answer was not sacrificial love. Philia, friendship love. Jesus is not interested in friendship love. Jesus is interested in your love and my love as in sacrificial love, a love that pleases him. And then we can overcome sin. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. I'm telling you, you don't even have to be born in a Christian family, have a Christian name to love Jesus. You make Jesus first in your life, you can defeat sin again and again. Can we all stand up? Are we happy being here? Yeah? So one thing you remember, if you live, don't live for self. Live for whom? Live for whom? Jesus. I end with this beautiful word of God. Don't write it down, but let, let it be written in your heart. St. Paul, the murderer of Christians. Have you heard? St. Paul, he used to murder Christians, but now he became an apostle, a disciple, the one who would spread Christianity. How did it happen? And this is what St. Paul said, Galatians 2.20. Let the Holy Spirit write it in your heart. What is this word? This word is something like this. I now no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Take it seriously. That means Jesus is living in you. I now no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I am now living, I am living by faith in him. I am living by faith in him. The one who loved me and gave himself for me. Christians, from today, if you want to overcome sin, if you want to live a conquering life, an overcoming life, do one thing. Do what pleases Jesus. Constantly ask yourself when you're on the crossroads of taking decisions, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Thanks to Charles Sheldon. Ask yourself this question. The day you start living for Jesus, your lust will go out, your greed will go out, you will be able to look at the opposite sex with purity because you will do only what pleases Jesus. Let's all join our hands. Loving Father, we come before you as we are. You know us inside out. All this time we were living a life that was so very selfish, only pleasing ourselves. Father, as we heard about this young girl, she had the choice to say yes or no, and she said no, because she loved Jesus. She wanted to please Jesus. Father, give us that same grace and the strength and the love to live for Jesus from today. We make this prayer, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.